Right now, Apple is in a very tough spot with regards to their iPhones. Between the 10s and 10s Max being ridiculously expensive and sales actually going down, the iPhone 10R is in kind of a weird spot right now in between. Kind of like a troubled middle child, if you would. On one hand, overall sales for the company are falling, but this is still their best selling iPhone. And on the other, honestly, it's a very misunderstood device. It's the cheapest of the 2018 iPhones, but it's still pretty darn expensive, especially here in the Philippines where it starts at roughly 51,000 pesos. Then you have the relatively low resolution IPS display compared to its siblings, higher resolution OLED displays. And then you have the fact that it only has a single rear camera compared to the dual rear setups that the 10s and 10s Max have. So what gives Apple? Well, to start this off, the true person behind this review is not me, but Ali. This phone has been her daily driver for a couple of months now, right? Yes. <laughs> and for me, since I'm the one presenting this review, I've spent enough time with it, just enough time with it to get some personal observations. So both of us are actually predominantly Android users and as predominantly Android users, here's what we think about the iPhone XR. Let's start with the negatives. All the things we hate about it that make us really, really miss Android. Oh, and I promise I'll try to keep this as short as possible so we can move on to the things we actually like about the device. Okay, in no particular order, number one. Why can't we hold down the Wi-Fi shortcut to go to the Wi-Fi menu? Why? Two, one day in and I already miss USB Type-C. Three, the notch. It's huge and ugly. The bezels around the screen aren't really that thin anyway. So at this point, the existence of the notch seems to be just so that it looks like an iPhone. Like it's some weird fashion statement as opposed to being an actual solution to bezels. And yes, I get it. We do need it for the Face ID sensors, but couldn't we have gotten the same notch treatment as the XS and XS Max? Four, for computers, personally, I'm a Windows user and I know I really can't complain about this much, but I really miss having full access to the root folder and everything just using Windows Explorer. Which leads me to number five, iTunes sucks. Sorry. Six, Siri isn't that great at doing web searches and answering questions and all of that compared to Google Assistant. Seven, using a third-party keyboard sucks. I'm a huge fan of SwiftKey. I've been using it for years and I don't like that you have to manually select it every time you switch apps. Seriously, why? Eight, there isn't any 3D touch. It's one of those really nice features that iOS has that I really like and the absence of it in the 10R kinda sucks. Though as a consolation, I think the haptic feedback feels pretty good. And lastly, nine. Yes, iOS 12 has group notifications now, but they're not on by default and I need to turn it on per app. Seriously, why? <sighs> okay, I promise. I'm calm now, I'm collected, there is no hate on this channel, we can move on. So with those things out of the way, we can finally focus on the positives. The things I really like about the iPhone XR from an Android user's perspective. Let's start with the small things. The control center, it's awesome. Compared to Android's quick settings menu, I actually like it a lot better. It's not as easy to customize, but honestly, for everyday use, everything you need is already right there by default and laid out very nicely at that, including great music controls and native screen recording. Sure, there are a lot of apps available on the Google Play Store and there are some Android phone brands that actually have an included app, but the iOS screen recording app by far is the best one I've used. Next, Face ID. I generally prefer a fast, reliable, rear-mounted fingerprint scanner as my choice of biometric security, but Face ID is actually pretty cool too. I'll admit, it's annoying at first, but after a while, this simply just becomes routine. And the way it works, after a while, you don't even notice it's there. Using Apple Pay or your banking apps, Face ID. Notifications in the lock screen, they won't even appear unless you show your face. And allegedly, as Apple claims, they don't get your facial data for their use as it stays locally on the device. 
it gives you a little bit of assurance, but yeah, I don't really know how to feel about it and that's a different topic. Let's move on. OS updates. So again, I use a Pixel, so I get Android updates very consistently and first all the time. And this is really, really important to me. So I appreciate that the 10R is no exception from Apple's consistent update rollouts. Next, iMessage, AirDrop, AirPlay, the ecosystem. If you have friends or family who also have iPhones, it's just great. It works very seamlessly. Now, on to some bigger things. Design. Build quality-wise, off the bat, this is definitely not a durable phone. It's a sandwich of aluminum, not stainless steel, and glass, and you do not want to be careless with this thing. But, you know, that aside, aesthetics. So many color options. Now, I don't give a f if you call me nostalgic or childish or whatever, but this, this is the Apple I grew up with. The one that had iPod Nanos and iPod Shuffles and iPod Touches. And as for me, and Ali, I really, really dig the Coral iPhone XR. And I just generally like having this many options over just the boring old silver, space gray, black. I feel like I'm sophisticated, you know? Next, the display. So unlike its bigger brothers, the 10R doesn't have an OLED display. It has a measly IPS display with a resolution of 828 by 7092. That's 6.1 inches big. Now this pretty much bothered everybody at launch when the specs came out, but actually in day-to-day -day use, honestly, you won't even notice the difference unless you're deliberately pixel peeping. The 10 hours display doesn't look bad at all. I mean, sure, when you put it side by side with a 10S or 10S Max, you might notice the difference, but yeah, it's not a bother. Next up, man, the camera is good. There's only a single rear camera, but it's actually the same sensor and lens as the 10S and 10S Max main wide camera. So you're pretty much getting the same quality. Sure, portrait mode is affected by this since we don't have two lenses, but I think it's still good. You also lose the telephoto lens, but come on. I don't feel like I'm losing a lot since the 10S and 10S Max telephoto cameras aren't as good as the main one. With just one main sensor, we get really clear and really vivid photos, decent portrait mode, 4K 60fps video, and up to 240s slow motion at 1080p. Basically, everything we need. Even in low light, the rear camera does really well whether we're doing photos or videos. Video stabilization isn't the smoothest I've ever experienced in a smartphone, but hey, I think it's pretty good. And for selfies as well, the front camera does its job really well. I personally don't really care much for the gimmicky things like an emoji or studio portrait lighting mode, but the shots from the front camera are really clear, detailed, and bright, capturing good skin tones, and I like that it's not overly processed. It's quite neutral and natural looking compared to a lot of other phone brands, especially the Chinese ones, that tend to be super vivid, super unnatural looking selfies. So that's camera, let's talk about performance now. Well, it's got the Apple A12 Bionic chip and 3GB of RAM, or 1GB less than the 10s or 10s Max. But hey, performance is still really great. Personally, coming from a Snapdragon 835 powered phone, this is actually more performance than I previously had. The A12 is an awesome chip, and Apple's hardware software integration is so damn efficient, you really can't go wrong with an iPhone when it comes to this stuff. Which brings us to my absolute favorite part about the 10R, that darn good battery life. With regular daily use, it just feels like it lasts forever. With that low resolution screen, I mean, I guess this was always going to be the case. I'm able to go like a day and a half on one full charge, even up to a full two days or more. Like waking up after the second night, it still has like 30%, which is crazy. This is definitely the reason to get the iPhone XR if you don't want to spend like 70,000 pesos for a XS. And add wireless charging to that and it's just one hell of an iPhone when it comes to battery. So, as an Android user for most of my smartphone owning life, has the iPhone XR converted me over to the Apple army? First of all, that's not the way I think. And second of all, no. It hasn't convinced me personally to get it as my daily driver, but I can tell you 
It's definitely our favorite iPhone out of the entire 2018 iPhone lineup. The design is cool. The camera is good, but the battery life is great. So if you're looking to buy a new iPhone, you'd be a fool for not considering the iPhone XR. So thanks for watching, guys. If you hated this video, feel free, leave a dislike, you asshole. But if you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit that bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a new video, and visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Joey, and I'll see you in the next one.